So I was going to say, let's get going, but I got one more thing to say. Mm. You know what I noticed about Collision and Rampage? Am I the only one that's ever noticed this before? When you watch AEW, what's the story of virtually every single television match? Do you know? Uh, I'm I'm having trouble thinking of a common thread. That's Virtually all of them. every yeah. single television match mm-hmm. has one thing in common. Okay, what is it? Honestly, Brian, I don't know. Well, look at the first three matches of Collision. Just look at the matches. Okay, you want okay. me to read them? Yep. Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson versus Top Flight. Okay. Yep. You uh, already should know the answer to this. But I, I, actually, actually, now I think I see where you're going. Yes. Will Osprey versus Lee Moriarty. Yes. And uh, blah, blah, blah. Gates of Agony and Brian Cage versus Evan Rivers and Voros Twins. Okay. All right. Now, now show me the give me the first two matches of Rampage. Do, 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 do. Uh, search A E W R here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Trent Beretta and Dalton Castle. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Brian Keith and J D Drake. Okay. Yeah. So what do all of these matches have in common? It's very obvious who's going to win. Exactly. There you go. Okay. Exactly. Okay. But you know what I noticed about Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision? On on Dynamite and Collision, because they're supposed to be like the A-shows, you always know who's going to win, but the person who's going to win tries to have a banger with the person who's going to lose. That is also true. Okay? Mm-hmm. But on Rampage, if you look at the matches, you also always know who's going to win, but on Rampage, it's always very one-sided. Usually. Like, they'll give the, the guy maybe a comeback or whatever. But, I mean, it's like, you know who's going to win, and at no point is there any doubt, and they don't even give you a chance to have any doubt. So I just thought about this, and I need to start watching these shows a little closer because it seems like there is a different philosophy between the A show and the B show. The A show is give the other guy everything, even if you're Will Ospreay and Lee Moriarty. Will Ospreay tried to convince you that Lee Moriarty was going to beat him. Yeah. But on, on Rampage, they don't do that. It's like, the guy who's going to win goes in there, dominates the match, maybe gives a couple moves, beats him. So uh, it's becoming very patterned. But let's let's get going here. We watched AEW Collision, May 11th, 2024. As noted, it opened with Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson versus Top Flight. And everyone knew who was going to win. It was still awesome. Dante Martin gets a hot tag. Shivani says Claudio is from Sweden. A very annoyed Nigel McGuinness corrects him. That was funny. And uh, Top Flight's getting all their big moves. Uh, uh, Dante escapes the giant swing of the sharpshooter, hits his nose dive on Claudio for a near fall. And they try a double team on Claudio. He powers out of that. Danielson hits a nose strike out of nowhere that knocks Dante out of the ring. Darius puts up a bit of a fight one on two, and then Claudio just runs through him with an uppercut. It's actually funny because Claudio's in the corner is biding his time. And Danielson and Darius are trading knees and punches and chops or whatever. And Claudio's not doing anything to help because he knows his guy's going to win. And he waits for his guy to win. And as soon as uh, Darius is set up, bam! Uppercut of Doom pins him. It was a good match to make the pay-per-view main eventers look strong. And it was nice when a match, we had a good match and we knew already know what's ahead for the winners. Because sometimes, a lot of times in AEW, someone will win a match and you think, well, okay, now what for them? And, well, they're... The point of that was to make the main eventers look strong. And that's a good thing. You know, I liked what they did afterwards with Brian Danielson because he cut this promo. And if you recall, you know, they had a lot of, uh, I forget what, which which random controversy it was. But uh, if you'll recall, Adam Copeland came out the, the following Wednesday and did a rah-rah speech for AEW. And, uh, and I was like, a, it was a good speech and all, but it very much felt like we are being attacked we will send someone out to stick up for us. Right. And uh, this week, Brian Danielson did the Raw Raw speech. But because, you know, there had been no big controversy or anything this week, it felt much more sincere. And uh, and he came out and just said, and I'm not saying that Adam Copeland's wasn't sincere, but the, the Adam Copeland one felt like, okay, the company wants him to go out and stick up for him. And this one felt like, well, the guy's got to do a promo, but he decided he loves the company, and he's going he's to throw this in there. So I liked his promo, and he was talking about how he loved AEW, and he said that the first anarchy in the arena nearly ended his career, which, by the way, is true. He got a concussion, and it was bad. But the reason he was willing to fight and won again was because he loved AEW. And as he's talking, Claudio just 
up and walks away. That's true. I should I should correct myself. There's one main eventer in this match. Claudio is not in the main event of Double or Nothing. Yes, he yeah. walked away, and the camera did show him walking away, but they didn't call attention to it. Mm-hmm. The announcers didn't say Claudio is walking. They didn't explain it or anything. It was it was a it was a question mark. And so Brian finishes his speech and talks about how Tony, whatever you think of him, he's at every show, but the Bucks aren't even here tonight. And he said, I'm willing to fight in a match that almost ended my career because I love AEW. I love what it represents and what it gives to the fans, and I will do anything to protect it. Thought it was awesome. Now, the only thing I will say, I don't know if it's even really a criticism, was we did need an answer as to why Claudio walked away. And... I think they should have given us the answer later on in this show, like right before the main event, because instead they did it on Rampage. Mm-hmm. And as we've seen, yes. you know, the last several weeks, I mean, the moment Rampage comes on, last time, 200,000 people just turned off the show as soon as Rampage started. So, you know, you lost out on a lot of people seeing Claudio's explanation because you put it on Rampage. I feel like it should have been on this show or... They could also show the interview on Dynamite Wednesday, but I think they need to do it on an A show because it's kind of clear now people do not see Rampage as a show that they need to watch. Or, or stay or stick around for as we learned here. Uh, last Wednesday, the Mogul Embassy turns on Swerve as we had another video package, and I was, I'm was i always happy when AEW shows these because they need to do it more. Will Ospreay versus Lee Moriarty. Yes, Will returns after weeks away. Second match in the show. I mean, granted, he's the, he's not made of anything the next show, but, uh, you know, he sneaks on here on TV, almost subtly. Roderick Strong comes out to do commentary. I love Roddy in the ring. I haven't always been a biggest fan of his vocal work. He was on fire here. <laughs> because he's great at being a dick. Yes! And they just put him on commentary, and he just got a chance to be a dick, and it was great. So he's out there. He says, all these guys think they're the best in the world. I'm the best in the world. I got this international title to prove it. He's taking shots at everyone, including Brian Danielson. He likes to fake things, such as retirement. And Will Ospreay is mentally weak. That's why he's refusing to do that Tiger Driver 91. So Will makes a comeback on Liam Moriarty. Roddy says, completely deadpan. I did not expect this. (laughs) <laughs> he was very, not not even a near fall. He was surprised Will Ospreay made a comeback on Lee Moriarty. You thought Leo Moriarty was going to squash his Thought he had him. Yeah. So Will keeps teasing the Tiger Driver 91, not delivering. And uh, Shane Taylor gets involved, and Ospreay's take care of him. And finally, it's a hidden blade, grabs the arms as if he was going to hit a Tiger Driver 91, but picks up, hits the Stormbreaker instead, gets the win. These men are very, very good wrestlers. They are. They are. This match was this match was awesome, but brother, sometimes you just got to beat a guy. Like Will Ospreay out there, like this is you know the main event of the Tokyo Dome and Lee Moriarty's uh, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion going on eighteen months or whatever. I mean, back and forth, back and forth, counter, 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 sell for the guy, sell for the guy, sell for the guy. And you know the good thing for Will Ospreay is he's so fucking great. That even going 50-50 with Lee Moriarty, he still looks like he's miles above everybody else in the world. But, I mean, man, sometimes you got to take more, dude. You're Will Ospreay. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. But people, they, they love to do this. They, they love this 50-50 thing. Tony loves guys going out and having great matches. Even if the story you should tell isn't that Will Ospreay and Lee Moriarty are basically at the same level. Yeah. But Will got him tonight. Yes. That's not the story of Will Ospreay. Now, the good news is afterwards, Ospreay is confronting Roderick Strong, and they're yapping at each other, and Shane Taylor punches out Ospreay from behind. Yes. They set up two matches, a little post-match angle. Great. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.